the next talk is going to be uh, by dr harshul tak uh, on conquering brown black and white beauties and harshul have you done your batting or are you going to bat and mm -hmm. come back <laughs> no 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 <laughs> thank you so much uh, dr namrata ma'am uh, rajesh sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, can you see my screen ma'am yeah we can see your screen but you need to let you more louder yeah yeah perfect okay can you hear me now <coughs> yes okay so i'll be speaking on how to conquer brown black and white cataracts we all know that uh, this brown black and uh, white cataracts are difficult to tackle uh, the problem with the brown and black cataracts is that the central endonuclear core is very dense and there is a thick leathery fibrous plate which is difficult to crack so the rexus have to be, has to be of optimal size it should not be small because uh, you may damage the cataracts margin when you are going to uh, do the phaco emulsification and when you are taking out the nuclear pieces and it should not be larger than 5.5 also because then you lose the advantages of the uh, the uh, newer generation iols which needs to be placed accurately in the capsular bag so the technique which i love doing it for Uh, last ten years is drill and chop technique, which I presented in ESCRS in 2011. So basically, I go ahead. This is a 1.8 millimeter FACO tip. As you see, I go ahead in the center and keep drilling in the center, away from the capsular excess margin. So by drilling, you get the advantage that you weaken the central endonuclear core, and you get a better depth to hold the nucleus when you are chopping it. so i do keep on rotating the nucleus and drilling in the center and once i drilled enough in center i go ahead hold it and give the first chop as you can see this first chop it cracks the nucleus through and through anterior posteriorly i rotate it 180 degree again hold it and chop the nucleus so once you have these two pieces as you can see then i rotate it again 90 degree and divide the nucleus in smaller pieces so in this way you can easily crack the hardest of the nucleus uh using minimal phaco energy uh utilizing the uh, correct technique so you can see these pieces are being taken out like a piece of cakes again coming to one more case you can see i'm drilling in the center and once you drill deep enough i go ahead and again hold the nucleus get my chopper from little bit periphery and you can see the crack it propagates anterior posteriorly so this is it again uh, you need to use chondroitin based sulfate ovd uh, in between to protect the corneal endothelium because uh, of course these cataracts they need uh, higher energy than the normal cases so this is the technique which i use for the uh, brown and black cataracts so if we come to the white cataracts we all know that there is a liquefied cortical matter which is there in the capsular bag and the the trickiest part is to create a safe capsular rexus in these cataracts so the technique which i use is a sequential two stage capsular rexus i go ahead and make a very small opening in the center because this is the safest area where you can create a rexus and once i create this small rexus i use a 27 gauge cannula mounted on a 2 cc syringe and you can see this is the mid peripheral liquefied cortical matter which is being sucked here and once you aspirate this from this side i go ahead from second side port and your capsular bag gets debulk and you can create a definitive uh, capsular rexus of the desired size so it's 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 important that you debulk the capsular bag nicely and then use a micro scissors to give a tangential cut in the capsular margin and you can make out that it's very easy to create a capsular rexus of adequate size and this cataract so this technique works wonderfully in intumescent cataracts and it's a very controlled technique 
works in almost all the cases. And then chopping nucleus is not a big deal. Most of these cases have a brittle cataract. It's easier to crack, but you need to be careful because there is no uh, cortical support there. Coming to the another kind of white cataract, which are morgagnin cataract. Uh, the problem here is not of the increased capsular, uh, intracapsular pressure, but the zonules are weak. The anti, you can see the anti-capsular plaque and the capsular bag is very weak. So you need to take off the liquefied cortical matter from your view and create capsular axis. So here I realized that capsular axis is small in size. When, so I go ahead and give a snip from other side and make capsular axis of adequate size. Now the next challenge in Morgagnin cataract is how to chop them because the nucleus here is very mobile. There is no cortical cushion there. So the, the technique which works best is to go with bevel down, hold the nucleus and come from uh, to the horizontal chopping from the equator. Again, hold the nucleus, bring it up towards you and chop it from equator. In this way, you can easily crack these mobile nucleus. Again, the Morganian cataract, it's uh, almost, there's no cortical matter, just a small nucleus there. So I'm making capsular axis. So when I reach this area, I rotate the nucleus, get it so that I can get a, a good view of capsular axis propagating of, of the capsule which has been stained here. I shift the nucleus again. So you need to improvise many times depending on the situation. Again, hold it from the center and chop it from the equator. I think, okay, this is the end of the case. Uh, with this, I come to end of my presentation. Thank you.